it, uh, you know, being a younger brother was a blessing because <laughs> now that I'm older, I can say that. But uh, being a younger brother was a blessing because my brother led the way for us in more ways than one. Being the oldest, you know, he he made the decisions that we learned from, uh, <laughs> both positive and negative. But you know, somebody had to do it, and he did. And. Uh, And I feel very blessed to have had somebody to look up to, like Zach, somebody to learn from, somebody to follow. And uh, you know, the fact that he found Emily just proves that good people get good things. And you know, Emily and Zach, you deserve each other. And Taryn and I are super excited because you know, we have a wonderful marriage and looking at you guys, it's just all the things that, you know, we hope for ourselves, we see in you guys, and I think that, you know, you guys have nothing but great things to come, and uh, we might have led the way in terms of getting married first, but no two marriages are the same, and I'm very excited to see where y'all's goes, uh, y'all are fantastic people, and you deserve each other, you're fantastic, thank you. Okay. There are moments in life when life seems to just happen and we wake up and only then we realize where we have been. As we read in the Torah this week, Jacob leaves home, he leaves all he's ever known and following a restless night of sleep, he awakens and discovers that this had been one of the most important nights of his life struggling to find meaning and purpose after having left his family behind. He declares, Behold, God was in this place, and I didn't realize it until just now. Holy moments of connection occur often when we least expect them. They are at times spontaneous, significantly meaningful, and something that we had, had, to, had we sought to plan them, could never have come to fruition. And so it was at a bar, several years ago, truly holy ground, where Emily, you agreed to go out with your girlfriend to meet her brother's cute friend. Emily and Zach, you met and you sat at the bar and never having gotten even or gotten around to even ordering a drink, you found yourselves there talking 10 hours later. And Zach, you were hooked. Two days later, you returned from Randolph to Austin to take Emily to a basketball game. And Emily, you quickly noticed Zach's southern charm and debonair nature. His patience was clearly on display as he sat with Emily with your six roommates while you ran just a bit late. Phone calls and dates continued to tie you both together. So much so that Emily, your mom, warned you if you keep dating that boy, he's going to make you fall in love with him and then you're going to move to Timbuktu. He survived long distances, introducing each other to the families, and Emily, even your own skepticism, that at some point the other shoe was going to drop. But there you were, on July 18th, accepting an invitation to take a plane ride with Zach and your dear friends, Carter and Kate, 
as they celebrated their own good fortune of having just bought a house. And as all romantic engagements take place, Zach, you mustered up the courage to ask Emily to marry you through the headsets that you both were wearing as you flew above the city of Houston. <laughs>